Okay, so our definitive guide on degree share catalogue printing. Let's get started with your choices on pages and binding. So the number of pages dictates the type of binding or does the binding dictate the number of pages? Chicken and egg, egg and chicken. So here we've got MA Visual Arts Printmaking Catalogue from Camberwell College of Arts. And this is a compact 36 page booklet four page cover, 32 inside pages, and you can see it's wire stitched. Wire stitching means stapling, so we put two staples down the spine to bind the pages together. Staples are always visible, we use silver staples. Here we've got the AUCB illustration catalogue, and you can see this is slightly thicker, so this is perfect bound. So the inside pages are roughened up on the left hand edge, glue is applied, and then the cover is wrapped around and attached. So two different choices of binding, stapling, wire stitching, or perfect binding. So stapling is the process of binding, we say up to 40 pages. 40 pages is where you start to get a bit of a curl in the middle and plenty of bounce. If you go over 40 pages, in theory, we can go up to 72, but if you went for 72 pages and stapling, You'd expect the cover to ping open, the inside pages to bounce open as well. And because the inside pages will be starting from a lot further away from the staples, they actually get trimmed a lot shorter the nearer they get to the center of the book. The cover is gonna be the actual size, in this example, A5, but the inside pages will be trimmed shorter to ensure that they arrive flush on the outer edge. So any page numbers or content as you get nearer the center of the book you have to really move that away from the trim edge to ensure that it doesn't run the risk of actually falling off the edge of the page. So wire stitching, you have to have a multiple of four pages for it to work. If we have a look at this example here, you can see that when a sheet is printed on both sides and folded in half, you get four pages of content. One, two, three, four. So it's folded in half, four pages of content. So for this process, you need multiples of four. So you can go for eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36, and 40. It's not possible therefore to print a 25 page wire stitch booklet because you'd have 24 pages that are bound in and you just have one sheet just floating around, just floating around loose. So can have a 17 page booklet, it's got to be a multiple of four. So again, when we quote, you'll see that we're quoting for a four page cover. And that is because the cover onto the thicker paper stock normally has four pages of content, front cover, inside front cover, inside back cover and back cover. So it's a four page cover. Same applies with the perfect bound book. Four page cover is the front cover, inside front cover, inside back cover and back cover. And all of those go onto a thicker paper stock normally than you use for the inside pages. If you did want them onto the same, we call it a self cover. So you could have a 20 page self cover wire stitch booklet where all the pages, for example, were onto 115 uncoated or 130 silk. That would make a nice compact booklet that sat flat on the desk. Obviously it is a little bit more flimsy because you don't have the thicker cover. So perfect, perfect binding starts at 40 pages. 40 pages means you have a four page cover and 36 inside pages, and that gets you to a three mil spine, which is just about thick enough for us to apply a layer of glue and for the spine to be thick enough to hold the pages in. We then attach the cover, and you'll see here the mechanics of the cover. It's glued to the first, and last of the text pages and it forms a six to eight millimeter hinge. This allows the cover to open up smartly and easily for the reader without them having to apply too much pressure. So you can see the hinge here impedes on that first text page. So you really want to keep any content six to eight mil away from that side of the page to avoid it being completely hidden but realistically, if you've got logos or text that you want the reader to actually digest, 
probably want to start them 15 to 20 mil away from that side of the page so they don't have to force the cover down really, really firmly to actually be able to see the content. Same at the back of the book. The acknowledgement here, the, the tail of the S is really close to the edge. But if you keep any important logos or content, 15, 15 to 20 mil from that side, it's going to seat, it's going to sit on the page really well. So there are your two options for binding, wire stitching up to 40 pages, perfect binding 40 pages or more. The advantage of wire stitching, as you can see, you can actually press the pages completely flat. So you don't lose any content or any information on the double page spreads. With perfect binding, you've got two or three mil in the center of the pages, which we call the spine gutter. And this is discussed on our perfect binding setup guide online as well. You can find that in the resource section on our website. Two to three mil on each side of a double page spread is kind of obscured and lost because again, you really don't want the reader to be forcing down the front cover of the book too much. It will risk breaking the spine. So if you've got images that are double page spreads, you can cheat a little bit. In InDesign, you can split the image into two. You nudge the left hand half left by two mil and the right hand half right by two mil. And on the finished book, it gives the illusion that they meet up, even though on the file, it will look a little bit funky because you'll have some of the image duplicated through the center. But when it's printed and you lose that section in the middle there, it does mean that it does visually look like it's gonna meet up to the reader. I think that's everything on the page count and the binding. At the top end of perfect binding, you can go for however many pages you need, really. This one for goldsmiths, it's probably three or 400 pages. We can go super, super chunky. This one's over two centimeters thick. Uh, it's A4 as well, which means the pages do open up a little bit easier than they would do on like a more compact, perfect bound book. This one for Kingston, again, is 100 uh, 220 pages because it's A6. It's, it's a lot harder for the reader to press the pages down. However, this is very compact. It's a nice little degree show catalog A6 size. Another example here of wire stitch catalog again for Camberwell. Again, this is 32 inside pages. So there's a slight curl there. You do have to expect that paper does prefer to be flat when it's folded. It always tries to bounce a little bit. Once the booklet's read, it's very rare that the cover will actually sit flat again. It always tries to get away from the text block. We can sit here and say that it's possible to um, eradicate that, but realistically it isn't. Um, paper's a natural material and you will have to allow for it. It's not an error. It just gives the publication a little bit of extra charm. Again, we can see on the wire stitch version that the pages sit completely flat and you don't lose that area in the spine gutter. So that is an advantage of wire stitching your booklet.